Hello, welcome to MapLibre tutorial number 11. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize a polygon from a PM tiles uh, source in 3D. So first go to the LiveMap uh, website and livemap.org and on the left side, uh, click uh, MapLibre and uh, overview. So here uh, you can find all the examples uh, for the MapLibre tutorials. And the one we're going to cover today is very much similar to uh, the first one here, display buildings in 3D. So previously, uh, I already created a tutorial showing you how to visualize building in 3D. But at the time, we're using the uh, map tiler, basically the uh, vector tiles from uh, map tiler. And so you need an API key. Uh, what we're going to cover today is they are completely free solution. So you don't need an API key. Everything is free. And you can get data from uh, host the PM tiles anywhere uh, through HTTP URL. And then you can stream the data. Uh, in, and then you can visualize uh, them in 3D. So first, let me show you what it looks like. Uh, you can go to the preview uh, website. And then on the left side here, click uh, 3D PM tiles and open this link. You should be able to visualize this one here. So right now, uh, you can see the um, uh, open stream map here. Now you see all the buildings are being uh, rendered. So this one, all the uh, building data, it's uh, coming from the over tour. Uh, map building data uh, and it's hosted on a uh, source uh, cooperative and take a look so you can rotate you can zoom in you can zoom out and this pretty cool uh, it's pretty responsive so you can zoom to anywhere uh, you like around the globe as long as they have some building footprint data and also if they have building height so you can actually customize the color whatever color that you are interested in also we have you can turn on different data layers so you can have building you can have uh, uh, area imagery and also you can have open stream map so there are multiple data layers in here that you can turn on and off here this is the buildings all right see here overlay on top of the of course if some of the buildings that don't have the building height uh, we exclude it so you might see some missing buildings here normal so okay so this is what we're going to create uh, today in this uh, video and let's head over to the tutorial and then on the left side click 3d pm tiles so for here, you can either run this one using Google Collect, uh, open this one, and then uh, you can just install the packages. Then you submit one and get the same result. And from now on, I'm going to run this one using my uh, Lab. So here, uh, first let's import the libraries. And so the data set comes from the uh, over to open buildings. You can click the link. Uh, you want to learn more about uh, this data set. So it's hosted on a source cooperative and then from here, and this was created actually last year by uh, Chris Holmes, and you can check out the data set. And this is what the uh, URL, so basically the PM types URL. If you want, you can click the browse, and it's actually under here. So you can see this file is almost 90 gigabytes. So it's a pretty big one, and it's a combination of all the GeoParquet files and then convert it to PM tiles. And so just one single file, and it's hosted. This, this is called serverless, so you can put the file anywhere on the server. Uh, you don't need to have a kernel or Python kernel or anything or, or, or a server running. It's just a HTTP URL. And once you host it, then you can actually get the URL. So source cooperative actually have a preview. So you can actually see this one. So this is a very basic um, uh, viewer that you can use to view uh, PM tiles. So you, can, you, you cannot really customize the color or anything. And it's loading uh, slowly because the PM tiles actually is... Uh, um, being requested through HTTP range request. So it depends on your zoom level, depends on your area, it's going to load the tiles and download to your computer. So you see here, this is all 2D, right? You can just see the black color building footprint. You cannot actually rotate zoom, um, uh, or, or, or get to the 3D view. So this is what we're going to cover is that we can actually use a map library and div map to visualize them in 3D. So the first step is uh, you can use the PM types metadata to see what's inside uh, the data. So you can just run this code block. It's going to get the metadata. It's going to show you the, the layer names. So basically, this PM types has multiple layers, and also it has a bounding box. So the bounding box might be useful. Um, sometimes if the, your data set is only, uh, only covers a small area, and you might want to automatically zoom to the area because otherwise it's not showing up. So it might not be very obvious. Uh, but in this case, these are um, global data sets. It's, um, you, you don't necessarily need to use the bounding boxes. Okay, so once you get some basic uh, metadata, then we can actually create a map to visualize that. 
So here we create a map uh, center around this location, uh, around New City, and the zoom label, the pitch, and also the bearing. So for the style, we use the position. So this one is from uh, Carto DB. It's free, so you don't need to uh, uh, you don't need to get an API key um, for Map Tyler. So once you have this basic map, then we can add the base map. Uh, you uh, add the open stream map and also the Esri wall imagery. So by default. Uh, it's going to be shown on the map, but you can set the visible pra uh, parameters by default to false. So it's not showing up, but you can turn it on and off. And then this is the key uh, style that you need to specify in order to visualize the data in 3D. So basically, we, are come, uh, we have this add PM tiles function that allows you to add any PM tiles uh, to the map. So this is the URL. Basically, we are pointing to this um, HTTP URL that you're coming from here. So you have added data set you want to visualize so get the direct url the pm tiles and then you set the style so you see here the style is the one that we are customizing so the style usually contains layer sources so here we can just use the layers and uh, you can get an id so this is the id going to showing up on the layer control um, so basically um, i'm going to show you later and also the uh, source layer so this one is very important make sure they use the same name is the one coming from the PM tiles. Uh, otherwise, if the name are different, then you are not going to be able to render. And also the field extrusion. So this one is the most important one. So if you don't specify this one, it's going to be just a flat map, just like 2D. Then it's not going to be 3D. And then you can do the filter. So the filter means because there are some buildings that do not have height attribute. I have the height attribute, but it's none. So basically it's no data. So you might end up uh, with some uh, polygons that are just very flat compare that the 3d uh, i will show you the examples uh, later and lastly is the paint is this is what you want to uh color the polygons right so the field extrusion color and then we do the interpolation uh, so you're going to get the height and then from zero if the zero is going to be light gray um, um from zero to 200 it's going to be light gray from 200 to 400 it's going to be royal blue and then from about 400 it's going to be light blue but this you can all customize so it's up to you you can change the color to any hex color code uh, i will show you later and the last one is field extrusion height so what's the height you actually want to extrude so because the buildings have the height attribute and so we're going to get all the buildings get the height and this one basically is the exaggeration so if you want to extrude uh basically add another factor into it to make it much more obvious then you can change this number uh, again i'll show you uh, later so after that, we can just run this one and then we can take a look. So this is the open stream map and you see now all the buildings has been rendered on the map. And you, again, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can rotate and it's pretty cool. Although the building texture doesn't look as good as the map um, Tyler, but this is free, right? You don't need an API key. So you can render any open uh, data from the internet and as long as PM type format. Also, when I hover my mouse on the map, you will see we have the height. Uh, 100 so for example 154 meters and also show you the country uh, something like that so this one come from here the template so the template allows you to specify the two tip so if you don't want the two tip you can turn this one off uh, say it to force and the template is showing you basically the html so we get the height and the double uh, curly brackets basically is getting the attribute from the data and then br basically a new line so basically separate into two lines and then country and also at the country ISO. Uh, of course, if you don't specify, so let me uh, turn this one off. Uh, it's going to show you all the attributes. So now cover my mouse again. So it's not perfect because there, there are some ID is pretty long. So you see it's, it's uh, exceeding uh, the width of the uh, two tip dialog. But clearly you can see how many floors, for example, the height and also the country, right? So, uh, and some of them might not have the floors. Some of them have. So this is something that you need to be uh, careful if you want to standardize some of those might you might exclude and earlier i also show you uh, there's a, a filter so if you don't filter so for example i can common this one out and then run it and you see now you you're going to have this black color those black color basically are the polygons that we down the building height and it might little, look a little bit weird so you might have some other here again they don't really have the building height uh, attribute and that's why it's black color if you don't want the black color, then you turn on um, the height. And you can also not just zero. You can change it, for example, if you just want the high-rise buildings, 
you can um, space it by this one, but greater than, for example, only 50 meters, then you're going to get all the buildings that are pretty high. So if I run this one again, you're going to see a much smaller number of buildings uh, because most of the buildings are, are lower than uh, 50 meters. So it's very flexible. You can customize it uh, pretty easily. So let me turn on back this one on. And also the last one here, uh, feet bounce. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a global data set. And um, so if this is a small one, small area, then you want to automatically uh, zoom to the layer. But for this one, we don't need to because if we turn this one off and you will notice when you create a map, and it's going to zoom in to the global scale. So, and because this building, we will actually, we want to see the specific area. So it's not very helpful to zoom to the global view. And that's why we turn this one off so that we can utilize the center and the zoom level that we specify. Otherwise it's going to be returned back to the global view so run this one again and so, uh, so lastly i'm going to show you how to customize the color so as i mentioned this is like uh, the gray color uh, lower than 200 meter and then if the 200 to 400 it's going to be um, blue color and also have those over uh, 400 meters so just look at this one uh, 400 and same thing so it's the highest category and that's why the color looks like this so here we can actually change the color to whatever color that you uh, want to use for example, we can change to red and then green, also blue, for example. And it's very flexible. You will see it's going to color going to render whatever color you like. The nice thing about this is that it's still the same data set, but it's being rendered on the fly and you don't need to do any conversion. So the blue color here, this is highest building. So all the green buildings are between 200 and uh, um, uh, 400 meters right? again zooming zoom up it might take some time to download the tiles sometimes loads are uh, the tiles are being rendered on the fly so it might take some time to load up but again this is a completely free solution so you don't need to pay anything then you can create some cool 3d maps it's it can be applied to buildings but it can be anything so as long as you have some polygon data and the polygon have some numerical attributes for example it can be population it can be temperature, uh, it can be income, it can be anything. So as long as you have that, then you can use this to render um, polygons in 3D pretty cool, pretty easily. And also here, uh, you can turn on the uh, area uh, air imagery. So take a look at this one. So you can see the area imagery building on top, right? Because this is very high resolution area imagery. So you might need to rotate to see the uh, basically the overhead imagery. Then you can overlay the building on top of that to be pretty close there might be some missing buildings because they don't have the height but other than that you'll be able to see all the buildings being generated on the fly and the tiles being downloaded right and up and also depends on your internet speed sometimes it might take a while to download uh, oh so this one because i set to uh, 50 so if i turn to zero then you should have um, a lot more buildings other than missing a lot of uh, buildings okay and zoom in and zoom out you can full screen uh not too so almost uh fully uh global coverage but you are welcome to zoom in to other areas so um try out see in your country or in your hometown see if it's being captured uh, so the data is coming from an over tour uh, it might not be very complete compared to uh, open stream or google map but it's uh, at least you have some high attribute that you can uh, play with Okay, so this is how you can visualize PM tiles in 3D with a couple lines of code by setting style. You might be wondering, like, if you have some vector data, how do I actually create these PM tiles, right? Uh, LeafMap actually has a function. So if you go to uh, leafmap.org and then from uh, API references, or you can just search it uh, here, vector to PM tiles. So there's a function here that uh, can help you do the conversion uh, from ve any vector data to PM tiles. So it can be GeoJSON, it can be SwiftFile, or it can be uh, anything. So under the hood, it's going to convert that one to MB tiles, and then from MB tiles to PM tiles. After that, you can host the PM tiles on GitHub, uh, um, GitHub pages, or any server that you have. Then you can just use um, map library and div map to render the data. Again, all you need is just the layer. Make sure you know uh, look in the, mm -hmm. the metadata and then see what kind of data layer you have. Mm -hmm. And after that, but the most important one is the paint. Basically, set the color, 
how you want it to be. It can be just a, a fixed color. This one is doing the interpolation, so it looks a little bit better, but you can just use a single color, just like this one. If you want to learn more about the, the, uh, the style, how to set it, you can also go to the Map Librate uh, website. So I'm um, going quickly here and then go to the, uh, 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 the, the style spec. And from here, you can go to in the layers here. So this allows you, for example, the filter. This is the one that we used uh, earlier. But you can also scroll down here to see this one, fill uh, extrusion. This is what we use here, the color, uh, the, the height, pattern, also the base. So there are a couple more options that you can customize. So you can look into the information and uh, feel free to customize to whatever uh, way you want. Okay. So this is what I want to uh, cover in this video. I hope you find it useful. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.